JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's Weekly Market Outlook webinar for the week May the 10th until May the 14th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the, fi on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, this week appears relatively light uh, compared to, to the previous ones. We have no central bank decisions on the agenda, while the most important events may be the US CPI uh, for April and the US GDP for, uh, for the first quarter. Inflation in the US is expected to have surged further, raising questions as to whether the Fed should start considering taping quantitative easing. The UK GDP is expected to have contracted in the first uh, uh, in the first uh, quarter of uh, the year, the first three months of the year, but uh, to have performed very well uh, uh, during March. And anyway, let's take things from uh, the beginning. Monday appears a relatively light day with no major indicators or releases on the agenda. On Tuesday, during the Asian morning, we get China's CPI and PPI for April. Both rates are expected to have risen to 1% year-over-year and 6.6% year-over-year from uh, 0.4 and 4.4% respectively. During the European session, we have Germany's uh, ZW survey for May. The current conditions index is expected to have increased to minus 42.6 from minus 48.8. While the economic sentiment one is forecast to have risen fractionally to 71 from 70.7. Following the improvement in the PMIs around the Eurozone in the last months, this will confirm that the bloc's growth engine continues to recover from the damages of the coronavirus pandemic. At the latest ECB gathering, officials kept their policy unchanged and did not discuss plans. Uh, uh, for uh, their bond purchases, but given that at the next meeting we will also get new staff macroeconomic proje projections, we may also get hints with regards to the bank's uh, future plans. With the recovery underway, officials may provide clues as to whether and to when they, they tend to reduce uh, the pace of their QE program. Now, later in the day, the U.S. jolts uh, job openings for March uh, are coming out, and the forecast points to a small ac acceleration to 7.500 million from 7.367 million in, uh, in February. Now, on Wednesday, the main item on the agenda may be the U.S. CPIs for April. The headline rate is expected to have rallied to 3.6% year over year from 2.6%, even higher from the first uh, from the Fed's inflation goal of, uh, of 2%, while the core rate is anticipated to have increased to 2.3% from 1.6%. The fact that the core rate will also climb um, uh, decently higher may raise questions as to whether the search in headline inflation will prove to be temporary and thus uh, whether the Fed um, uh, whether the Fed should start considering scaling back its uh, monetary policy earlier. That said, with the U.S. employment report disappointing on Friday, it seems that Fed officials may not be in a rush to alter their policy anytime soon. We will get to hear from several of them this week who may attempt to clear the picture around the, around the Fed's uh, future plans even further. Those uh, speaking after the inflation data may be even more interesting to listen as uh, they will provide an even more updated view. 
if they indeed uh, stick to their guns, uh, that it is still too early to start discussing about policy normalization, equities are likely to edge higher, while the US dollar and other safe havens like the Japanese yen are likely to stay under selling interest. Now, ahead of uh, the CPIs during the European morning, uh, the UK preliminary GDP for the first quarter is due to be released, and expectations are for a 1.7% quarter over quarter contraction after a 1.3% expansion in, um, in the last uh, three months of 2020. That said, the monthly figures for March may show a sharp increase mainly due to the fast vaccination rollout pace. The case for a better economic performance uh, during the month of March is also suggested by the forecasts of the industrial and manufacturing production um, uh, productions. Both the year-over-year -year rates are expected to have uh, rebounded back into the positive territory. Specifically, they are expected to have surged to 2.8% year-over-year and 3.8% year-over-year from minus 3.5 and minus 4.2%. This is likely to add uh, more credence to the Bank of England's uh, decision to scale back the pace of its uh, bond purchases at its uh, latest gathering and may come in line with the bank's view that the economy may return to its pre-pandemic size in the last uh, quarter of this year, a quarter earlier than previously thought. With that in mind, uh, GBP traders may get encouraged to add to their long positions, especially against the US dollar and the Japanese yen, which, as we already noted, we expect to continue underperforming. As uh, for the rest of Wednesday's uh, releases, Germany's final CPIs for April and Eurozone's industrial production for March are coming out. Germany's final CPIs are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates, while Eurozone's uh, industrial production is anticipated to have rebounded 0.6% month over month after deteriorating 1% in, um, in March. Now, on Thursday, the only release worth mentioning is Australia's wage price index for April, which is expected to slow to 1.1% year-over-year from 1.4%. At last week's uh, gathering, the RBA said that despite the strong economic recovery in Australia, inflation pressures remain subdued in most parts of the economy, and that at the July meeting, they will consider further bond purchases following the completion of uh, of the second 100 billion Aussies of uh, purchases. Uh, thus, with uh, wages slowing even further, the chances for more quantitative easing by the RBA may increase. This is likely to prove negative for the Aussie, which although is a risk-linked currency, we prefer to avoid for now, even if market sentiment improves further as we expect. Finally, on Friday, we have the U.S. retail sales for April, the U.S. industrial production for the same month, as well as the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for May. Retail sales are expected to have slowed in both headline and core terms after searching in uh, March, while industrial production is anticipated to have slowed somewhat to 1.1% month over month from 1.4%. The preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for, the, uh, for May is forecast to have increased to 90.3 from 88.3. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for, watching and, uh, for watching and listening. Yeah, I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you, are interest, if you are interested in more, uh, in more detail and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 7.30 a.m. GMT. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.